finally here. Fourth video. Let's build out that minimal wardrobe. Dewey Groove style. All right, so we're finally here, right? So we're gonna finally build out this minimal wardrobe. Now minimal in my aspects, and I know a lot of, a lot of content creators are out there creating minimal wardrobes that you can wear the same pieces over and over and over again. And, and you can do that here as well. But the pieces that I have that I'm going to show you are about foundational. I don't want you limited to the 10 or 12 or 15 pieces that I show you and think that you can't do anything else. Now, if you want to wear just those 15 pieces, you absolutely can. And then at that point, quality is the most important thing. But let me tell you, variety is the spice of life. I love colors. I love, I love dressing for the fall. I love dressing for the summer. I love dressing for those things. So I don't worry so much about how many colors I have, but the dominant colors in my closet, and let's recap what those are. They're white, black, gray, beige or tan, if you will, and blue and green. Those are my colors. Those those fit me pretty well. Now, beige is really expanding because it could be rust. It could be light blue. It can, excuse me, rust, light tan, dark tan, all of those colors in the in the brown color color area, color space. That's all me. Right now, before we get started, Let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. If you like this comment, go ahead and hit subscribe, like it, share it. The best way for this content or this channel to grow is by word of mouth. So go ahead and tell your friends, tell your parents, tell everybody, tell anybody that can, that can absolutely get into this. So now let's move on to the shoe. Now, in my opinion, the most important element of your outfit or your fit, as my son says, is the shoes. Bar none, they are absolutely where you should start, my opinion. Now, you need to keep your shoes clean, and we're going to talk about how to, how to keep your shoes clean, how to take care of them, how to make your leather last a long time, and all that good stuff. But for right now, understand, shoes, most important part of the outfit, because you can have a great outfit and tattered shoes and it's not going to look any good. But if you have a great pair of shoes and an average outfit, it's going to elevate, right? So the first pair of shoes, we're going to talk about three pairs of shoes today. We're going to talk about a minimalist sneaker, which is basically a sneaker that doesn't have a whole lot of elements on it. it you know, stripes, wild colors, you know, it's, it just doesn't have a whole lot of, of that on it. Those are going to be great for underneath suits, underneath jeans, underneath chinos. They're going to work. Then we're going to talk about a pair of Chelsea boots. And then we're going to talk about these. So let's start off with these. These right here are the common, excuse me, Cobbler Union. I think they're called the Miguel. I'm not sure. But they are what's known as a hole cut. And what that means is, is that it's one piece of leather that goes all the way around. And there's one seam here where they brought that together, where they brought the, the leather together. But beautiful shoe. This is an incredible shoe. Um, I use these under jeans. I use these under suits. I mean, you could, you could wear this with just about anything. Now, some people will say that because it doesn't have broguing and all of that stuff, and we'll get into that when we start talking a little bit more about shoes and what they are, because it doesn't have a whole bunch of this, that, and the other, you can't wear them casually underneath jeans. I beg to differ. I wear these under jeans all the time and they feel fantastic. Now this is a new pair, but I've got a few pairs in there that are great. Uh, one thing to, to note that I'm looking at it, you wanna have shoe trees. Shoe trees are going to keep your shoes absolutely immaculate. They're gonna keep their shape and all that stuff. And again, when we start talking about shoe care, we'll get into this. Also make note of the laces. You want your laces to kind of rock and roll like that because there's nothing that takes away more from a pair of shoes than bunny ears after you tie them up that's no good that's played so that's the these are the cobble union hole cuts 
The next set of shoes that we're going to get into are these Chelsea boots. Gray Chelsea boots from Hawker Rye. And the best part about Chelsea boots is they're, they're kind of an elevated casual boot that allows you to be able to wear these not only under jeans, but also under chinos and maybe a suit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear these under a suit. I would probably wear leathers under a suit, but these you can definitely wear under some chinos. You can definitely wear underneath some jeans and they look fantastic. They're casual. They also have this elastic right here, which makes them a slip on, you know, so you use this little tab to pull them on. You just slide your feet right in. Fantastic. They're, they're, they are some of the most comfortable shoes that I own and I wear them underneath jeans all the time. And last, but certainly not least, we've got some Adidas. These are kind of like a Stan Smith knockoff, right? Um, doesn't have a whole lot going on here. Got the perforations for the Adidas lines. But again, it's a really clean, minimal sneaker. Now it does have the color back here. And if you want a true minimalist sneaker, it's going to have no color here and no color on the tongue. But I like color on, on mine. So I have a few of these in different colors, blue, black, red, what have you. Uh, these are great shoes very comfortable i wear them all the time <laughs> now next up is going to be pants right pants are the next foundational piece because what we're doing is we're building from the ground up and with that you are going to need a pair of pants or a couple of pairs of pants that are going to fit well with the shoes that we identified now i identified those three shoes you can have as many pairs of shoes as you want i think i have 60 or 70 in here right now, but you can have as many pairs of shoes as you want, but you can get by with those, just those three, right? Now for the pants, what pants you decide or what pants you wear are going to depend on your daily environment, right? So you're going to have different requirements if you work on a construction site as opposed to in a corporate office, right? For me, I'm in a corporate office. I'm also in a lot of casual settings. So for me, the foundation of my pants is going to be jeans and chinos. Now, what are chinos? I think everybody knows what jeans are. What are chinos? Chinos, fantastic pair of pants in the sense that they straddle a line between jeans and dress, dress slacks or dress pants in the sense that you can dress them up with some of the, with the whole cut shoes that I sh identified earlier or you can dress them down with the minimal sneakers. They work with both. And they're very comfortable and you can get them stretchy. You can get them from just about anybody that sells clothes. Now, I used to sleep straight snooze on chinos. Back in the day when I was growing up, we used to call them khakis and they're still called khakis. But khakis are actually khaki colored chinos. But chinos come in so many other colors, navy, wine, blue, black. I mean, they come in so many colors. They are so versatile. So we're going to get into a little mini lookbook and go over some of the things that you can and can't do with those chinos. But let me tell you, get you a navy blue pair of chinos and get you a gray pair of chinos and you are about 90% of the way there. Those jeans. Those jeans need to be dark wash. Absolutely, the first pair of jeans that you get in your minimal wardrobe will need to be dark wash. I mean, dark, dark wash. They don't have to be black, but dark indigo wash because that's going to give you the greatest versatility to be able to wear it, to be able to dress up and to dress down. You don't want it to be distressed. You don't want to have a whole lot of different elements on there. You want them to be simple. You want them to be plain. You want them to be versatile because that versatility is what's going to allow you to wear them with a blazer and also with a bomber jacket and also with the t-shirt, with the denim jacket. So definitely want to get into that. So when we're talking about pants, I would suggest that you get a navy pair of chinos, a gray pair of chinos, and at least one pair of dark wash denim.
All right, so we're moving on up like the Jeffersons, right? We're coming on up, we past the pants, now we're on to, let's start with t-shirts. We're gonna start with t-shirts because t-shirts are going to be your base layer. Anytime that you're layering, especially for the colder months, you want to have your thinnest layers closest to your body. And as those layers go out, you want them to get thicker and thicker. You don't want a thick layer underneath a thin layer. You don't want a sweater underneath a t-shirt. You want a t-shirt underneath a sweater, or better yet, a t-shirt underneath a button-up shirt, underneath a sweater, underneath a coat, right? That's how you properly layer. So t-shirts. I would say that to start, you want at least two black and two white t-shirts, right? Now, how should they fit? There's a lot of debate on how, <laughs> how t-shirts should fit out there. But for me, they should be a little bit, not tight in the chest, but snug in the chest. They should be free of debris. <laughs> Definitely keep them, keep them lint free and, and clean. They should be on the arm. They should hug the bicep like this right here, right? You don't want them flopping around because when they flop around, when the sleeve is way out here and it's real big, they make you look skinnier. They make you look small. They make you look skinny and weak. Same thing on the midsection. The midsection, you want it to be not as snug as your chest. You want it to be a little bit more open, a little bit looser. Now, for you big guys, you want to stay away from the thinner fabrics. You want to get thicker, heavier fabrics. Um, thin guys, you can, you can really wear wherever you want. On the thing of or on the subject of V-necks or crew neck, crew neck, it doesn't matter. Uh, I think that bigger guys lend themselves better to crew neck, but if you've got a chiseled form or if you're bo either box shaped or skinnier, then you can get away with a V-neck. Just understand that this right here, this point is pointing to your chest. So if you are uncomfortable with your chest and all of that stuff, then you don't want to wear a V-neck, you want to wear a crew neck, right? Now, if you are comfortable and you're comfortable in your own skin, have at it, you know, do your thing. Okay, so let's talk about dress shirts. First and foremost, the first shirt you should have is a white Oxford button-down shirt. And even though I really don't like button-down shirts, I understand the versatility of the Oxford button down. The Oxford button down will allow you to be able to dress it up and dress it down. You could wear a pair of jeans with that Oxford button down with the shirt open, with the t-shirt underneath, and it's very casual. Or you could button that shirt up, wear some chinos, put some shiny shoes on underneath those chinos, maybe even throw a blazer on, and you're good to go. The the Oxford button down, you could roll up the sleeves for an ultra casual look, or you can you can button up. Some people even wear ties with them. So they are very, very versatile. Now, when I say button down shirts, I don't like button down shirts. People don't understand what a button down shirt is, so let's let's talk about that. Button down shirts are shirts that have a button on the collar that cinches it down to the shirt. That's a button down shirt. Button up shirts are shirts without that, that just button up. Now Oxfords do button up, but they're specifically called button down shirts because of that collar. What's the origin of that? Real quick history. Button down shirts were actually for polo players who were back in the days, back hundreds, a couple hundred years ago, when they were playing polo, their shirts, the collars would flap around and hit them in the face and it was very, very annoying, very distracting. So an enterprising person created a button on the shirt to keep it cinched down and that keeps you allows you to be able to play in the game without the distraction of that uh, but that button makes the shirt a little bit more casual uh, can you dress it up yes but you will never be as dressy as a non button down shirt now also when you're talking about button down shirts they're always going to be five point on the spread. Whereas when you have a, 
a non button down shirt or just a regular button up shirt, you can have a spread collar, which kind of comes out, which allows you to wear fatter ties and things like that. Again, we'll get into that, that type of stuff a little bit later, but for right now, just understand that it's versatile and it's a great shirt. The next up, next thing that you should have in your closet from a shirt standpoint, you should have a light blue button up shirt and a dark blue button up shirt. That gives you the most versatility to wear with jeans, to wear with the navy chinos and the gray chinos that you have, to wear with a blazer, to wear with all of those things. Those are going to be what you want. Now, you don't want a whole lot of patterns. You don't want a loud pattern. You might want to have a little bit of pattern on on these shirts, these blue shirts and the, and the Oxford. You might want to have a small pattern where people can see it if they get right up on you. But when you're talking minimal wardrobe, all of the pieces in that wardrobe need to be able to fit and not be seen as different. It's the sum of the 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 clothes equals a, a better whole for all the parts, right? So what you want is you want things that don't have a lot of accoutrement. You don't want things that have a lot of uh, pattern and anything that's going to draw attention away from the overall outfit. All right, next up, we're talking sweaters. It's a little bit chilly out here. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, sweaters are in important, but if you're living in California or Florida or any place like that, not quite as important. You could probably go long on your t-shirts, maybe even get some long sleeve t-shirts if it gets a little bit windy wherever you are. But in places that have a little bit more of a climate change, a little bit more seasons, you're gonna need a sweater. So you're gonna need at least three sweaters. You're gonna need one heather gray crew neck sweatshirt or sweater, right? You're gonna need at least two, one of each, either a navy v-neck sweater and a gray v-neck sweater. Those are the three that I suggest that you have. Now, why do I suggest those? You can never go wrong with a good crew neck sweater. They look great on everybody. You can wear dress shirts underneath them. You could wear t-shirts underneath them. You could wear them, if they're thin enough, you can wear them under jackets and coats. Very versatile piece. The v-neck shirts or sweaters are gonna be great because you can wear your dress shirts underneath that and with them being gray or navy, you can wear either your Oxford button down or your blue dress, blue dress shirts you could put a tie on them underneath that v-neck. Very nice look, very nice fit. So that's gonna give you the most versatility to be able to wear a v-neck shirt or sweater on Monday, and then maybe even turn around the following Monday or even that Friday and wear the same v-neck shirt, sweater, <laughs> with the t-shirt underneath that cuts, under, that cuts underneath that collar. Nice casual look. Fantastic. Next item on the list is the ultimate casual piece, and that is that denim trucker jacket, right? So you can get a denim trucker jacket from just about everywhere, and you can put that on underneath your or over top of your t-shirts with some chinos or over top of your t-shirt with some different wash jeans. Now, can you wear two denim items, whether it be denim pants and a denim trucker jacket? Yes, if they're a different wash. You don't want a medium blue denim jacket on with medium blue pants because then it looks like you're trying to match, but they never will quite match and it's not going to look good. So if you're going to wear a medium or dark blue denim jacket, you're going to want to wear a light blue pair of jeans. Or if you want and I've said this before, let's lean back on those chinos. You could wear any color chinos with any color denim jacket, obviously, if they, as long as they match, but they pick up each other well. So a, pan, a tan pair of chinos or some khakis with a light denim jacket with gold stitching really looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. So denim jacket is the ultimate casual jacket. You can kind of dress it up. You can definitely dress it down and they're gonna last you for years and years. And last, but certainly not least, let's go over the workhorse of the upscale closet. And that's that navy blazer, right? So that navy blazer is going to be what you're gonna use to elevate a lot of the items that you have in here. So if you have 
some dark wash jeans, a nice sweater or shirt, and then you throw a blazer over top of it, that navy blazer, it elevates it to, to no end. You could put on some shiny shoes underneath and it's gonna look great. Or you can dress it down, put on some, some chinos, and you wanna put on like the gray chinos with some minimal sneakers, and you could put that blazer over top of it with a t-shirt underneath, looks great, looks great. So that navy blazer is, you're gonna get the most wear out of that blazer than any other blazer that you buy. Now, does that mean you can't go out and buy a gray blazer or a light blue or whatever? Absolutely not. But that navy blazer is going to be your absolute workhorse. And you're gonna make, you're gonna need to make sure that your fit is right. And we're gonna talk about that in another video. So many videos coming out, so many. We're gonna talk about that in another video and that's going to be your absolute upscale choice or what have you in a minimal wardrobe. One last thing before I wrap this up, let's talk about how do you buy clothes online and know that the fit is going to be where it is, where it needs to be. So what you're gonna do is go out and get yourself a tape measure and you wanna tape, you wanna wrap it around your chest right around here and record that number. You wanna get it from here to here and record that number. You wanna get it from the bottom hem of your shirt all the way up to the top hem. You're gonna to wanna to record that number. And you're gonna to wanna to record from your midsection. Those are gonna be the numbers that you're going to use because every shirt manufacturer, at least like on Amazon, let's say you're buying from Amazon or Bonobos or what have you, they're going to show you what the measurements of that particular garment are through those calculations, right? So if you get those numbers right, you know your measurements, then you can look at a shirt and say, okay, that's gonna fit me snug in the chest, that's gonna hit me long um, on my waist, and that's gonna be a little bit too short or, or too long or just right on the arms. So a little fast fact, fast fact, if you want. And again, before I wrap this up, we wanna make sure that if you like what you see, hit that like button. If you love what you see, hit that subscribe button. Really helps the channel out, really helps me to grow. I appreciate it.